amazing how much heat that puts off. So does this make sense? We can spend time because you will get a question on this, maybe two. So the hypotenuse is always this side, opposite to the 90 degree. Square this side, square this side, add them together and take the square root of this one. And you'll be able to figure out the hypotenuse. So I put it all this larger than the other sides. Yes. is always the longest side of the triangle. Which comes back to the point, when you think about that, always remember, when you go back to check your math, if you're checking your math at the end of it, and you work it out, and it is ever less than one of the other two sides, you know you made a mistake. So it's a good point, uh, Godwin, that you pointed that out, because that's one of the things is when you check your work, if you just remember principles and the practices, you can always go back and, and check your work. And a lot of times you can just sort of in your mind say, if this side is, and I, that's why I remember three, four, five, so say it's uh, six, eight, I know it's going to be 10 or whatever, I can, in my mind I'm going to say my answer should come up to about 10 or nine point whatever. Uh, you start doing that, I know that's my biggest number. When I finish, I go back and look at the two sides that I knew. This hypotenuse better be a larger number, because if it's smaller, I did something wrong. So again, we already know what the, per, uh, the parameter is, the perimeter. So this would be what we're gonna do if we walk around these. So it doesn't matter, the perimeter is just walking around whatever type of, um, how many sides it has, doesn't make any difference. You just always adding up this, all the sums. So again, you might, you might say, uh, how many sides do you have to add up to get the perimeter of uh, a hectagon? How many numbers, John? It can be a very simple question, like how many numbers would you add together to get the perimeter of a hectagon? The answer is, Hectagon. Six sides. So you have to take six sides. Mm -hmm. Now you know and they only have to give you one number because you know they're all equal. Mm -hmm. So if they said this was two feet, and the perimeter is two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two. Be the same on the triangle as long as it, as long as it equilateral triangle. If it's the other ones, you can, these could be all three different measurements. These could actually be all different measurements too. They don't. It's just that you add. It has to have a sum of whatever it is. But as long as you know, uh, an octagon is eight, hectagon, septagon, pentagon. Just know how many you're going to. So it's just the shape. You're not doing anything with the area. You're just looking for. The perimeter. So again, squares doesn't really matter. Uh, a square, when you add the four sides up, you're going to end up with 360 degrees. Again, think about this. If I divide that in half, this this thing will re remain the same. This one will be half, and this one will be half. And that equals 90, so if I have 90 in that triangle, 90 in this triangle, I'm going to have 180 when I have it squared. So you don't have to remember anything other than, you know what, triangle is 90, square is going to be 180. 
So again, squares, rectangles, rhombus. It's just a matter of the verbiage they give you. I don't know of anything like they're going to ask you anything really, really weird type thing. The whole idea is just know that there are different um, shapes <coughs> in the rectangle sector. And the same as triangles and squares. Again, all kinds of things. Um, these can be solids. So then you, you're talking about uh, having to figure out areas. Well, you know, I don't know of anything like this being on the exam either. It's just more or less knowing what cone is, um, what pyramids are, and all that sort of stuff. Cylinders. <coughs> We will talk more about cylinders and we'll probably talk more about what we're going to do when we get to hydraulics and pneumatics. But know that a cylinder um, can be a tank, doesn't have to be uh, an actuator of any sort, it can be just a round tank. Cones, they can have different angles and all kinds of different things. Um, conical ones. You'll see Tinsmith will have to lay out half patterns to make these things. We don't have to do it, but they, they do exist. And a sphere. And really, the only thing to worry about this here is a sphere, it's just a circle in all dimensions 360 degrees around one center point. So now we've got every, now we're into volume. So, again, we want to know about volume of a square tank, a, a cone, a circle, or a cylinder. So, think about what we know about what, what is volume. Volume is just how much liquid or gas or whatever you put in here, will this actually hold? So we got length, a width, and a height. Three dimensions, when you start talking about volume, we're looking at three things. <clears throat> I don't particularly like going through here and learning more formulas to remember them. So I go, volume is equal to area, what do we know about area? We know what the area of a circle is, we know what the area of a triangle is, or a rectangle, and we know what the area of a, we already memorized that, we wrote it down on our test when we came in. So, what is volume? It's the area, I'm gonna say times the length. You can write down times the height, times whatever it is, doesn't matter, you're only going by the third dimension, one unit. So, you have the area of a circle, it's going to be length. You have the area of this one here, and this happens to make it'll be a length or width or height. It'll be the one that you haven't used. So you got that. You already know what it is for a circle, a rectangle, and a triangle. You already remember these. So all you have now to think of for volume is one. Whatever area you did times that third dimension. Make sense? because you don't have to remember any more formulas. I wouldn't anyway. I don't recommend that you volume of a rectangle is length times width times height. The angle of a cone is, well, cones, I'm not aware that you have to worry about them because then it's just a triangle with some depth. Uh, Volume of a cylinder, you've taken your area of the circle and you've added the length to it. So, um, like I said, here's this one is the one we'll probably do a lot of stuff because of hydraulics and pneumatics. We're going to throw those together, especially for cylinders. We'll probably even do this just for the simple fact that we have to fabricate. So, we have to fabricate and we'll talk about that. But remember, volume is just the area that you've done when you add the third dimension. 
Make sense? Yeah. So, the formulas that we use for uh, volume are the construction of a tank or a hopper or a cylinder, or calculating the weight of a plate that you want to lift. You have to know how thick it is, how much surface area, in order to figure out how much it weighs. And that's all you have to know about for. So, what is it that we're going to remember when it comes down to getting ready for anything that can be thrown at us from a math side or a calculation side? Now, we'll add a couple things to this when we do hydraulics and electrical. We're going to try and the one that we are making formulas. But I'm not going to go there right now, but just for what we need for true calculations. One, two, three, four. Five, five things to remember. You should be able to figure out anything that you have to calculate if you know these five formulas. So you could memorize them and like I said, write them down on a scrap piece of paper right off the bat. Anything besides that, like if they said, how much is a piece of half inch plate four by eight weigh? They're gonna tell you how much it weighs, how much a cubic foot or cubic inch or cubic something steal away. You have to figure out how many cubic feet it is and multiply by whatever that is. But as long as you can figure out the volume, they'll give you the information in the question that says how much it's giving I mean you gotta give it up. Yeah you're not expected to know weights and kind of all the other sort of stuff. So really if you know these should be able to do 99% of any of the math questions they'll ever ask you. I know uh, they'll get tricky in a way because I know they'll uh, give you a question on a fuel tank that's they'll give you the dimensions or whatever. You gotta work out the, the volume. But the key thing is they'll say that's half full. So keep one to keep an eye on. Yeah, and that's the type of information they give you. They'll give you all the stuff. And they'll say it's half, three quarters, a quarter full. You gotta to remember to divide by four or whatever. Mm -hmm. Read the question. Now you probably get sick of me saying this, but the best information or the best I can advise you to do is as you're doing your exam, take your have a blank sheet, cover the answers, read the question once. Before you look at the answers, read the question the second time understand what's written there because exactly what you just said they're going to give you a piece of information that if you take off and just do the calculations and just do straight calculations you'll miss it all right the, the question is one or five questions what the question that is for the exam it's one hundred five questions oh yes how many have. hours um, how long how long do you do mm -hmm. how many hours is your exam? Yes. You can have up to four hours. Well, you want that five percent. No, no, like you're from the time for your 135 questions, you have four hours to okay. complete them. Okay. Out of that, there's probably, um, I'm going to say maybe 10 calculation questions. And I'm guessing I have no idea. Okay. But you will have just plain calculations, but you're going to have one like building a tank or weight of a tank, another one for a tank to watch, uh, and we'll just we'll talk about it is if they tell you that the tank is enclosed, you have to have enough metal to close it off, put a top on it. So if you read it and just say the tank, a lot of times people will only think of the two ends, the two sides and the bottom. And so if they say how much metal do you need to fabricate a tank four foot by eight foot by ten feet? They say it's an enclosed tank, or they say right off the bat, an enclosed tank is measured blah, blah, blah. What is it? What material do you need to fabricate that tank? If you don't know that it has a top, you're going to be off one side off. You'll have five, you're adding five sides together instead of six. So you have to take the information that they give you. And it's not that they're trying to trick you. They give you the information, but if you try to read the question or you feel under pressure or time limits, You'll miss that information, 
and you read the question, uh, I guess I'm jumping ahead, but when I talk about preparing for the exam and when you do an exam, if you read the question twice, you'll get 10% more. Studies show you'll, have, you'll get 10% more by reading the question twice. Because you will, there will be at least 10 questions on there that you're going to jump to conclusions to, and you will answer the wrong question. And they will provide you with the wrong answer, knowing that if you miss the top and don't put a top on it, they'll give you the five sides. They'll give you an answer for figuring out the five sides. So you have to read and it'll take every piece of information. That's why I say, draw the crane, draw the little stick person, put as much information on that thing, and then think about, okay, I got this problem. On through it, I got all my information. What do I know from others, not just what they gave me, but what do I know about a triangle or a square or a rectangle or angles? Think about all the things that you know exist. If they didn't give you certain information, don't have it because it is in that question. Just be careful. And if you have to read it three times, read it three times. So, Is this, does that make sense? Is that, is that something that, you know, does that sound like a way to approach your calculations? Is it simplified? Do you find that complicated? Is there anything there that we want to go over? But you should have these five down. Actually, there's six. One, two, three, four, five. You should have them six down should be very comfortable and know how to come up with, with this. So if you want to add this one, you can add this one too. No, you can figure it out. It's not something they have. You should be, make sure that you're comfortable that a triangle is just half of the square. That will make, well, uh, I found it made life a lot easier than me trying to remember all the stuff that um, you sort of start, you, you read through here and all of you get overwhelmed by how much you're, you think you're expected to know. Comfortable? You know all that stuff that's on the board? Good, it's going away. Okay. If you are 60 feet away from a crane, you're looking up at a 45 degree angle to the boom. What is the height of the boom in the vertical position? 65 feet, you said, away from them? 60. 60? Oh, I don't know the question again. Pardon me? The question again. The question. You are 60 feet away from a crane. So you, the crane's over there, I'm 60 feet away from it. I'm looking up at a 45 degree angle look at the top of the boom. How high is how high is the boom? in a vertical position, 60 feet away, looking up at it, how high is the boom? Any guesses?
Okay, did you draw your information? What they gave you? You got a crane here. It's in its vertical position, and you're standing 60 feet away from it. You're looking up at a 45 degree angle. What do we know? Number one about this triangle. 90 degree. We know this is 90. We know this is 45. What's this? 45. Okay. What do we know about 45 and 45? Is it base angles? Kind of angle, kind of triangle, is it? Yeah, it's uh, isosceles. Exactly. What do we know about isosceles triangles? Are these two sides have to be equal. Exactly. Not the one opposite to the, not the one opposite to the right angle on hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. The other two sides have to be equal. Yeah. And the question is, how high? is the boom. Right. So without any calculations at all, if you drew it out, you don't have to write it down. All you gotta do is draw this picture and then say, what's the, they gave me this for a reason. What is it? And it goes back to now just think about triangle. Never mind calculating, never mind anything is think triangle. They gave me they give you an angle they're normally saying if you have a triangle if they say this is in a vertical position, you know you've got a right triangle. So if they, if they tell me I've got a right triangle, it will either be isosceles triangle or I've got to use a hypotenuse, the, uh, the um, Pythagoras theorem. But look for an easy answer before you get into anything else. So if they ask that question, that's the type of thing to make sense. You need to shim a pump. You determine that it requires a 64th of an inch, 1 8th of an inch, 3 64ths of an inch, 5 32 of an inch, and a half an inch. What's a total amount of shims you just put under the pump? Just shim the pump, and you, you put a shim under it, it was still too low. Then you put another shim under it, it's still too low. Then you put another shim under it, it's still too low. Then you put another shim under it, it's still too low. Then you put another shim, finally you got to where you want to be. How far is that piece of equipment off the ground? So, how do you think you would do it? What do you have to do? How do you add? How do you add fractions together? Add your sixty-four to sixty-four. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay. Do what? Could add your 64 to your 64s. So take this one and this one. Yeah. 
make it four sixty fours, which would be which would be sixteen. Okay, when you have fractions, the easiest thing to do for fractions is make them all the same. So 1 64th, you've got that, right? 1 8th, how many 64ths in an 8th? Uh, That's the 7th. Still got 64th. Now you always take the high, the highest number here as a denominator and convert everything to that. So we are up to here. Now we've got 532, which equals 10 64ths, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a half inch. How many 64ths is that? Well, half inch is equal how many 64ths? 32? Right. 32. So now I take 1 plus 8 plus 3 plus 10 plus 32 equals. So I'm taking each of these numbers here. Yeah. Adding them together to get 54. 54? I, need, I know it's 54. Oh, it's 68. So now I take. 68. Okay, 64, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm going by what you tell me because I don't know what the answer is. I should have said I do know what the answer is. 27. Um, so now to make this, this these can both be divided. I divide this by 2, gives me 27. So I divide this and this by 2. Can I divide this? Because it's so, you, so if you could continue to divide by 2, I would do it again. Can I put 2 into 27? No. Right, so this is my final answer. That's as low as I can go. Right? So number one, when they give you a whole bunch of different ones, find out which one is the biggest. The denominator down here, and convert everything to that. So 1 64th, 1 64th of them is equal to 8 64th. So I take 8, 8 times 8 equals 64. So 1 times 8 equals 8, right? That gives me 8 64ths. Right? So this is already in 64th. 32 times 2 equals 64. So I have to do the same thing at the top. So I have 5 times 2, which equals 10. So that gives me 10 over 64. And half is 2 times 32 equals 64. And I have to multiply by 32, which equals 32. So I get my 32 64. Then I add up all the top numbers, and I know it's going to be over 64. And then so if I can divide, this was 26, I'd divide by 2 and keep taking it down to get my lowest denominator. So you have this number you get, you'll have to look down through your column. Again, remember, read the question, because if it says what, they may give you this number. I hope they don't, because that's, that's if you work, if you work it out and it comes out here, it should be right anyway. But you should always take this down to the lowest denominator. So that's another type of question you could possibly get. Good. And we 
work with shims all the time, shimming everything up. So, I mean, it's directly related to what we do day to day. So, okay, you're using an 18 inch level and a machine, a machine you're working on is six feet long. After placing the level on the machine, you must shim it 50 thousandths of an inch to make the bubbles go to the center of the level. What is the shim required for the machine to be level? Can I get the measurements again, Larry, please? You're gonna, the machine is six feet long, and your level is 18 inches long. And you put 50 thousands of a shim underneath it. So, we got a, we got a machine base. Six feet long. We got a level with a little bubble in it, and that's 18 inches long. And when you put the shims under it, you have, did I say that? So 0 0.050 inches worth of shims. This is benchmark. So, how many shims do I have to put under here to move that up? Shim it correct. Any guesses? How are you attempting to do it? Let's pull, let's, let's pull that route. Could have been how you're trying to do that. Yeah, I know you have the idea of doing about it. So what, what principle are you using to come up with the answer? Talking it the right way. Okay, let's let's dissect what they gave us. We've got 18 inch, we got a six foot bed here, and we're trying to level up for a six foot piece of equipment. And all we have to do it with is, and we do that all the time. You never have exactly what you want. You have a piece of something that you have to use. So number one, what do we know? We know this is six feet long. We know that's 18 inches. Let's find out the relationship between those two because they're the only two pieces of equipment that we're using. So 18 inches and six feet. We know 18 inches equals one and a half feet. Number one, get them in the same measurement, right? So I'll have one and a half. How many, and I wanna get a relationship. So anytime we talk about a relationship, we're really looking for a ratio. What ratio is this 18 inches compared to this? So we got a foot and a half. If I use two of them, I'll have three feet. If I use four of them, I'll have six feet, right? So I got a ratio of four to one, right? So I know that I put in 15 to make my 18 inch level come up. I'm using 50 thou. When I, if I was to be able to stretch that out to six feet long, I'm gonna to have to do what to this number? Four, four times. So now I take times four because I have a ratio here. I have 0 0.2 hundredth. So now 
now the, again, a lot of stuff we're going to do, we're just going to talk about ratios. Forget about trying to remember a formula to do any of this stuff. We don't care about it. We're only going to think common sense or something that we have. Throw all the formulas away. If somebody wants to remember all these formulas, I can get them for you. But I'm a simple person. I like to remember the least amount of things that I have to do. So you're going to find that as we go through all these questions, it's to come up with a ratio and work with ratios. And then it's just straightforward. If at any reason you want to know what kind of a formula you come up with that, there are long formulas, but if you want to remember all those, I suggest that's do it the easy way. Just cheat a little bit. And so does that make sense? Yeah. Is that an easy thing to do? If you see another question like that, if you're shimming something and you have something and it's not the same distance, and this might not always come out exactly 4 to 1, it might be 4.5 to 1, whatever the ratio is, use a ratio and then with the information, again, read the information, know what you do have for, for stuff to work with, and then figure out what they're asking for. And if you can do this, think ratio. Before you do anything anywhere, think, can I make a ratio out of this and figure it out? Because it could be teeth, gear teeth, run speed, could be anything. And there are formulas for every one of them. I don't think you want to write them all down when you going into an exam or even worry about that, because that clouds your head with a bunch of stuff that you don't have to remember. You look a little bit confused or or you look like you have a question. Does that uh, is it possible for us also to know the formula in case just to know the formula we can use? Um, because when I look at the question, <laughs> no, I'm not used to this kind of question. You just look a little bit confusing to me. So, okay, how would, how were you trying to figure it out? Maybe I can attack it in, in that way. How would you, given this information, this is the information you have. Excuse me, Larry. Now, this would be the same kind of thing as on the software, right? If I was trying to find software to change the network pump and stuff, it would be saying. Mm, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you get to alignment, there's, it's all, yeah, it goes off in a different direction for alignment. Okay. So, yeah, this is, would be just for, you know, you have a base and you're putting something on it, you know you have to shim it up. How, do you, how would you shim it up and try and come up with a quick, easy, because you only have an 18 inch? The ideal thing with you had a six you foot, six foot level, you have a six foot one, you know, level up, you're all set. Most people would take that in the field, but they're not giving you, not saying you in the field. They may set that right in the middle, start jacking up, put all your shims here instead of under the level. It's just that as you get close to it, you're going to be off more because you're only on, only covering, so you can do it mathematically a lot quicker this way, the way we just did it. Or you can use that 18 inch level and, and win here. But practically, they're asking you how you do it. They're looking for just be able for you to be able to calculate it. But go ahead. How did you? How would you tackle that with that information? For me, I was looking at maybe we use the, 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 the uh, formula for the triangle, the area of the triangle, something like that. Oh, sorry, so the area of the, of, of the square. The area of the square. That was what I was thinking. I wanted to use before. Maybe the length and the breadth, but uh, will we'll form an equation at the end of the day, something like that. Maybe the, uh, for example, if I want to. So you're thinking about taking your level, of, and, and, and correct me if I'm. You've got your your bubble. You got 18 inches, and you know that this piece here, we start the same going like this and you're trying to figure out this formula of that what that wedge is yeah. knowing that this is 50 thou at 18 inches and this is six feet for me I will want to say maybe 
uh, okay, converting 18 inch to make it uh, equivalent to six uh, feet. Uh, I would say uh, an half. There's one and half, uh, one and half uh, feet times x equals to six inch. Something like that. I will write by do that that route. Um. Only ways you can do this. Um, you can figure this out. Um, I would have to. I'd have to do it and bring it back here because I can do this in probably three different ways. Because I can take it as a wedge and the same with. What I thought you were trying to do, and at 16 inches, we have a measurement here of 0 0.050, and the relationship to that to being 72 inches away would be 16 divided by 72 is the same equals. Zero point zero five O um, times X. So you work this out, which comes out to four equals um, this now becomes your I'm trying. I don't want to confuse you more. That's why, I'm, unless I know what you're. I think the best way you did it is okay. Because you can make this. Because you know this. You know the length of that. You have to change that. One of the things that you always look at when you're doing any kind of calculations is this and this have to be in the same. So you have to take this six feet and make it into inches, or you have to take the eighteen inches and make it into feet most important thing because you'll come up with something wrong. If you try to use 6 and 18, you will throw yourself off. You won't be able to come up with any calculation. So number one, you have to, you know, here, make them into inches. And the other way we did it is we made 1.5 uh, into 6, again, which equals 4 to 1. This is equal to 4 to 1. Um, there's lots of ways you can do it. Formula-wise, you're doing ratios. You, when we get into other things, you're going to have driver overdriven times teeth minus x and all that. I'm trying to get away from that because yeah. that's another formula. When you get into when you get into write the exam, you're you won't. No one will give you that information. You have to have it in your head. So if you want all these formulas, I could probably provide them. I suggest you don't go that way because you will not get them on the exam. If you do formulas, it will have to be in your head. So I don't I can give them to you. If, if you if that's if you are very formula uh, very uh, formula 
thought pattern, I can get you a whole bunch of them, like a few pages of them of the ones you need. I'm trying to get yeah, away from that. Have it in case, just so. I mean, that's, uh, I want to pass. Is you can't take it with you. You can't take yes, it with you. You have to memorize them. Yes. So I know when you work with it, when you make a uh, soft problem with it, with this format, it gets to stick in your head more faster than just knowing them. But working with them on pro with problems, solving problems with the formulas would really help when you know the formula. But if you don't know it, you, don't really, you may not really know what to do. And I don't know it off the top of my head because I don't use formulas. Yeah. I never have. But I can provide you with formulas. Matter of fact, in your book, let me look it up because I'll have to go back. But you have, okay. in that book, I'm going to say that there's a pile of formulas in there and you can memorize them if you want. Uh, but I'm trying to steer you away from that. But I, if that's where you're comfortable, maybe me and you should take a few minutes because that's not where I'm going to go okay. through this whole course. I'm going to be leading you away from that. But I don't want you to have to memorize formulas. But if, if it helps you to understand, I'll go through them and I'll find them for you. But that's not, I'm trying to stay from, stay away from that, just to make things simple. Because that's why people get very uptight, because they think they have to memorize multiple formulas. And I'm trying to say, don't think of formulas. We've only got six, I think, we identified. Yeah. Number seven. You have to understand what a ratio is. And that's going to apply to a lot of your questions. There's formulas for each one when we get into speeds of gears and gear trains, uh, speeds of belts, um, speeds of pulleys, distance of belts, and all that stuff. And there's a different formula for every one. But if you make them into a ratio, you can solve all the problems. So you can remember one thing, or you can remember 30 or 40. And that's why I try to, I, I'm trying to lead you to stay away from them, but I will find them for you. So until you're satisfied, maybe at the end of the day or lunchtime or whatever, I can go through here and I can show you and show you what's going to come up and in each of the sections and you can say, yeah, that, I'll do that. You can highlight it in the book. You can go that route. But I'm going to try to get you only thinking this, I'd like to change your thought pattern because it will take you down the road that you can calculate hundreds of things compared to remember trying to find a book in the formula. So, like I say, um, I'll, I'll do that for you. So, does this make sense? That like the first part? Yeah, the first. When you did the ratio was easier than what you were trying to do now. Yes. And as we go further on, you're going to find it's going to be even that much easier because mm -hmm. a formula will take you a whole page to figure it out. Yeah. We're going to do it in two lines. Gusset has a side five inches long and another side of five inches long. What is the area in square inches of the gusset? The gusset is five inches, has a side five inches, and the other side is five inches. What is the square here? What is the square? What's the area in square inches? Five. 
What's a gusset? First of all, let's go back and make sure mm -hmm. when you read it, you know what a gusset is. A drain pipe? No. Yeah. Gusset something you weld in yeah. to strengthen, to strengthen like a tank. Let's say this is a lip of a tank. And you have a platform. A gusset is something that supports, which supports um, this platform up here. So, knowing this is a triangle, and again, that's what the question would be, a gusset. If you don't understand what a gusset is, you're going to go off in the wrong direction. You know that this is five inches, and you know this is five inches. So, if this happened to be a square, this would be right, because it would be five times five, because area equals length times the width, but this is a triangle. What do we know about a triangle? It's half. So when we when we go from a rectangle to a triangle, this is one half of that. One half of the rectangle. So now it's 12.5 square inches. Again, that's why I said when you remember the, the triangles and that you have to know because they'll just say you have a gusset. And if you don't think the right one, this is what you're going to come up with. And you'd be right as far as figuring area of a square, but a gusset isn't a square. It's only a, it's, it's, it's a piece of steel, rectangle you put in, and your most your your strength in anything is making a triangle. Triangle is your strongest design. So when you when you go through a question again, read it, and then start to think about what information they gave you. In this case, they just told you it was a gusset. It didn't tell you its shape or anything else. Okay? Yeah. How about calculate the volume of a tank with inside dimensions 32 by 45 by 21? So we're looking for the volume of the inside of the tank. We would fill the tank up. How many cubic inches or how many cubic feet? So they'd ask how many, they give you the tank in inches and they're looking for an answer in cubic feet. What was the size of the tank being married? It's um, 32 inches by 45 inches by 21 inches. 32 by 21 by 45? 32 inches by... for 